What's one thing in life that you have set aside, perhaps unintentionally, or even neglected, because life became too chaotic, and you just haven't gotten back to it? Consider that today as we move through this episode. And know that it's perfectly okay. We all go through that. And hopefully this episode is that nudge of inspiration to get you back to whatever it is you've set aside. Welcome to Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy. I'm your host, Kathy Stricker. I'm a state patrol wife, mama to three lively kiddos, a yoga teacher, certified NLP coach, and an energetic rhythms expert. As an energetic rhythms coach, I help action-taking women use their body's rhythms and the moon's cycle to optimize productivity and avoid burnout without letting their desire to remain in control alter their focus. And this podcast is all about doing just that, and perhaps a bit more, so that you can create your own path to health, harmony, and happiness. So come along with me, and may this episode serve as a nudge to discover tools that could help you on your path towards more intentional living. Enjoy the show. Hey friends, welcome to episode 48 of the Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy podcast. I know last week when I left you, I said that this week's episode was going to be all about the best way to ground yourself, but I made a decision to make a couple changes after I had already um, gotten that whole episode ready, and I decided first to talk about the fact that chaos in life is simply inevitable. And to open the door to some tools and techniques that you might find useful in settling yourself when life does get chaotic. Here we are. And if you're watching and you see the title of this, um, I kind of put something about need some grounding because, wow, friends, summer is almost over. For my kids, they start school next week. And I had that realization last night. Like, I I knew it was there. I knew it was coming. But... um, It was last night when I was putting my eight-year-old to bed that I was like, oh my gosh, legit, it is really next week, like next Thursday that they start school and we have not done any school shopping. Granted, we, I don't, we don't need to get school clothes. I just need to get shoes for new tennis shoes for both of my big kids. Um, but all the other, all the other things like the notebooks and the folders and that kind of stuff. And we will shop our own house first before we get those things, but I'll tell you what, um, our local big box store in our little town of 7,000 some never has notebooks, never has the notebooks that we need. Like somebody comes in, I think, and buys all of them out. I don't know if they do it for, you know, filling backpacks for donations or whatever, but, um, so now I'm like, okay, well, I've got a plan to make a trip to Des Moines to go to Walmart or Target to get the things that they need. And oh, it's kind of annoying, but I had that realization. Um, But that's not what we're here to talk about today. So if you're listening to this and you are in the same boat as me, ah, school's coming, which is also a blessing, right? And that is why I'm here today because When we are not on a regular schedule or who else out there, I guess, has felt that not having a regular schedule, even if your, your summer schedule is somewhat regular, um, it's still enough to throw things off a little bit, right? So when you don't have that regular schedule, it like throws your whole life off and it takes a while to transition in as far as what I have discovered. And, um, I just kind of feel like I, we've made it to August and now I feel like we're finally in a routine or in a schedule. And that's been like two months of adjusting. So transitions can be hard. That's not what I came to talk about today, but wow, that is, I could talk a long time about that as well and, and how that relates to your yoga practice and all of that, but we're not going to do that today. But, um, if you have felt the effects of not having a regular schedule, let me know in the comments, <laughs> let me know because I agree. I am there with you. I am there with you. You're not alone when you're not on a regular schedule or even if you are on a regular schedule, but it's a bit different. Like 
from the majority of the year, at least. For instance, we have um, someone who comes to our house three days a week, the three days a week that I'm working. And they come just a little bit later than what we'll be leaving for school. And it's just that much different. The Lulu still goes to daycare, but the big kids hang with a high schooler. And um, it's just that much different that the routine is switches things up. And that affects you out there, beautiful lady. That affects you. Um, definitely. Even as much as the, the difference in change in schedule can be exciting and it can make you want to do more things and um, do all the fun things with your kids. It can also leave you feeling a little bit unfocused and scattered, which can make you feel stuck because you've stopped making progress or stopped. Um, I don't want to say making progress, but you've stopped moving forward or moving towards maybe what you had done the work to create or done the work to do during the school year, right? It can, so, so that feeling of stuck where you're just like in the planning phase or constantly in planning and not actually moving to that taking action and where this comes into play is with yourself, with the nurturing of yourself, right? You just can't get into that regular routine um, because you're doing random things like swimming lessons or ball games or going to the park or going to the zoo or going to the pool or whatever it may be, because there's all these fun things that you could be doing and that you do and all these places that your kids need to go or that you want to go with them. And that's fantastic. But what that means is that the regular practices that you use to feel grounded, to feel settled in who you are as a person and to feel focused and clear often get put to the side, right? Like they go away <laughs> and that's what summer does to us. And I hope that I'm not the only one out there who feels like this. I don't think that I am because I know I've talked to many of you who have said, oh, yes, I just can't get this done or I just can't get back into my regular workout routine or I just can't get back into my regular walking. Um, or my regular yoga practice. And in all actuality, it's those things that your body needs to feel the most grounded. Numerous times over the past couple of weeks, I have asked people or when I've asked people, well, are you practicing or have you been practicing? And they look at me with the deer in the headlights look and say, no, no. And I know I need to be. Then when they start, they take that first step to just start they instantly feel more grounded. They instantly feel that connection with their body, with their spirit, that, that whole self, right? So the things that get put to the wayside are, for me, things like my yoga, well, my yoga practice doesn't usually ever get put to the wayside, but it could be. Maybe that's one of the things for you. Journaling sometimes goes by the wayside. Um, walking or intentional movement, I know it's been super hard to um, for me to get in that routine for some reason this summer. And I don't exactly know why. I think it started happening when it was so unbearably hot where we live that um, like, like it's just challenging to get out because it's hard to breathe because it's so muggy and hot. And it's not necessarily just the heat, it's the mugginess. Um, but then finding the time in the morning, if my husband's gone, for me to leave the house and be able to do that, that's, that's the challenge. So um, usually during the school year, I have, I have an ideal time that I can do that. And when I do that, um, so it's things like that, um, the journaling yoga, walking or intentional movement. What are the things that you find ground you? Maybe it is just taking time to meditate or taking time to sit and be still, or maybe it is running. Maybe it is, um, going to your regular workout class and connecting with the community there. What are those things? Can you relate to this? What, what have you been neglecting over the past few months um, or maybe even longer that you know are things that help you and that ground you? I want to remind you that it's okay to not be perfect when you start these habits or when you restart these habits, right? So you know that you need these habits. You know that they are things that can make you feel your best that they are things that um, really help you feel clear, help you feel focused, help you feel um, yeah, not burned out, 
help you feel full, I guess, and help you move away from that chaos that's, that happens when it just naturally because it's summer. And that's the beauty of summer also is that we get that adaptability and we get that flexibility. Um, but it might be time now that the kids are getting ready to go back to school. It's time for you to also get back into that space of settling, of feeling grounded. There's naturally going to be a transition space, but just start thinking about it. And it's okay to not be perfect and to not be where you were when you left off in the spring or at the beginning of summer. You don't have to expect that your yoga practice, which maybe has been non-existent, is coming back five days a week, but maybe it's just two days a week or three days a week, or maybe it's just one day a week. What is the first step that you can take to get back to those grounding practices, those grounding and settling routines that you used to have, or maybe that you want to have and that you want to adopt? And remember that when you're starting or restarting routines, it's always helpful to pair them next to something that you already do, right? Put it so it naturally fits into your, into your schedule near something else. Like for instance, with energetic rhythms tracking, if you're going to do that, the easiest way to do it is to plug it into a space where maybe it's when you get to work. You sit down at your computer and that's the first thing that you do before you turn your computer on or while you're waiting for your computer to start up. That could be an easy time to plug something like that in. It's always best to pair those habits next to things or new habits next to things that you are consistent about and that you already do. You'll figure that out for yourself. One of the hardest things though is to just get started, get restarted with whatever you are not doing, right? I get it. I have been there. I'm telling you, um, personally, it's the walking, like I said, for me this summer. And I went out and walked last week when two of my kids were gone and I haven't made, I haven't intentionally walked since then because life, ah, I hate that, but you're not alone is what I'm saying is what I'm telling you because I, my goodness, I'm sure you are out there and, and that has this same thing has happened to you and that's okay. We've all been there. We can get back to it. Granted, I'm, I'm still doing my yoga practice, so I'm still getting some of that movement in, but the walking also really helps me feel connected and settled. And it's important for my health, especially. So I know you've been there and it's okay. What I want you to think about today is six feet in front of you. Just imagine that flashlight shining six feet in front of you. And if that's the, all that you can see, what's the next step? Take this as encouragement. What is the next step for doing the thing that you're struggling with getting back to or even starting, like tracking your rhythms or getting back to your mat for your yoga practice or getting back outside and walking, right? What is that first step that you can take, okay? Yoga has this profound effect to ground us and to help us feel in our bodies and in our elements. It allows you to connect deeper with who you are so that you can start to stop the real challenges that keep you from getting to your mat, believe it or not. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys. If you've practiced yoga long enough or if you've practiced it ever at all, you start to realize that things start to come up like difficult thoughts and difficult emotions and feelings. And, um, yeah. And then lots of times that makes people want to run from their yoga practice, but yoga is the first step in beginning to, it's like the, the catalyst or the icebreaker to beginning to dig into the actual challenges that maybe keep you from doing things that you know are good for you, but it are hard to do or hard to get done. So keep that in mind. And I want you to write, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, watch, or as a replay, obviously, what's one action today that you can take to get back into whatever grounding practice you've been neglecting lately? Maybe you can share that grounding practice as well, but really I just want some sort of accountability for you out there. What's one action that you can take towards getting back to whatever you've been neglecting lately. 
So I just want you to know I'm here. I'm with you. I see you. School is almost back in session, but you don't have to wait until school is back in session to start taking action towards nurturing yourself again or towards grounding and becoming more focused. You absolutely don't have to. The action can start today. And maybe that's as simple as putting on your calendar when you're going to do that activity and scheduling it in so that you know you've got some other sort of plan for when you're going to do it. You're not alone. I'm making a plan today also for when I'm getting back out and walking. And especially because if you're in central Iowa, we've had beautiful weather yesterday and I think for the next couple of days. So um, my plan is to go out and walk this evening. And we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know. Um, I do have some other activities going on this evening, so we'll see how it goes with with managing all of that. But what's one action that you can take today? You're not alone, friend. Remember the flashlight six feet in front of you. That's all I've got for you today. Um, hope this is encouraging to you and hope this gives you, gives you what you need to be inspired to take action and to just take that one little action today, as small as it may be. One action to help you get back towards feeling grounded and feeling settled in your body and more focused. Next week, we will go ahead and talk about what I think to be the best way of grounding yourself when you do feel chaotic, when you do feel like you are scattered and like life is out of your control. But until then, if you liked this episode or any of the other episodes in this podcast, would you take a screenshot, take a screenshot of the episode of the podcast and share it on your social media, share it to a story, um, share it to your posts and tag me at Karen Yoga Wellness. That's C-A-I-R-N Yoga Wellness or at C Stricker, C-S-T-R-U-E-C-K-E-R or tag nobody. (laughs) I don't mind. Just share it if you liked this or if you think it could help just even one other person. It's up to you, but I would love your support. Or if you're not on social media, you can simply head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating or review. Until next week, I'm Kathy Stricker, and you've been listening to Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy. Kathy.